I remember getting my first power bank back around 2012 and I could hardly believe that I had a device that could keep my iPad and my iPhone topped off while on road trips. Now today, power banks have come a long ways with just how fast they can be recharged and also how fast they can charge other devices. Now we have power banks with built-in charging cables, MagSafe for iPhone, the ability to plug them into a wall, and there's even power banks that can keep laptops charged. Now I do wanna say Anchor did not sponsor this video. They did send me three of the power banks in this video, but most of these I did buy with my own money and we're gonna be talking about all the things that you need to know when you go to buy a power bank and what I would recommend most people purchase. And of course, if you're interested in buying any of these, I am gonna have links in the description below. So be sure to check down there for the most up-to-date recommendations. So the first thing you need to look into is capacity. Most power banks are gonna come in at either 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, or 27,650 milliamp hours. Sometimes they'll say 5K, 10K, 20K, or 27K whenever you're looking at the description of the power bank. Now, typically the capacities are overstated, so they're not giving you the actual real world amount. So for a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, I typically find it good for about or just under one total phone charge. If you get a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, that's gonna get you anywhere from one to two charges total. A 20,000 is gonna get you three to four charges, and a 27,650 will get you around six or so phone charges. So for a phone, if you get at least a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, that's gonna give you over one charge. But if you have a tablet, most tablets or iPads have a 10,000 milliamp hour battery on the inside of them. So if you buy a 10K power bank, that's gonna be just enough to charge it maybe once or just under one full charge in the real world due to some loss in the total amount of power whenever you're charging it. So a 20,000 will get you about one to two charges and a 27,650 will get you two to three charges. And then if you're gonna charge a laptop, then you're gonna want at least a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, but typically you're gonna want one of these bigger 27,000K ones because laptops can really burn through a lot of capacity. Also, if you're wanting to keep multiple devices charged, like if you just have a phone and some AirPods, then a 10,000 milliamp hour battery is gonna be fine. But if you have an iPad, or if you're wanting to really keep multiple devices charged multiple times, I really recommend buying at least the 20K size power bank. The next thing to look into on a power bank is the connector type. So a lot of the power banks now have these built-in USB-C cords. You can also get them with lightning, or you can even find some with micro USB. But even if it has the built-in cord, you wanna make sure it always has at least one spare port just in case the cable ever became damaged on it. So make sure you check the port on it so that you can charge your device. Or if you don't wanna use an actual cable, then you can always buy a MagSafe power bank as well. The MagSafe ones are cool because they can actually just go directly on the back of your phone. No cable is required as long as your phone supports MagSafe and has a MagSafe compatible case on it. The biggest issue I have with the MagSafe chargers though is these power banks can get hot and they start to overheat the phones as well and they can throttle your charging speed. So you need to look into the type of MagSafe it has on it. I recommend getting one that has Qi 2 or 15 watts of power from MagSafe. Some of these older ones like this one only charge at seven and a half watts. So it's slow and it will heat up. So that makes this one really good if you want just the smallest possible MagSafe power bank, but it's not going to be as fast as charging with a Qi 2 MagSafe power bank, or if you're charging with the USB-C, the USB-C ones are going to get you a lot higher power on them. Which leads us to the next thing that you need to pay attention to on a power bank is the wattage. And we're finding a lot of power banks are now giving higher wattage than ever. Some, some older ones typically topped off at about 10 or 20 watts, but a power bank like this one, this is one of the Fusion power banks, it gives up to 30 watts of power out which is going to be a great option for charging all the way up to a MacBook Air. Not quite as great for a MacBook Pro, but 30 watts is really fast for use with a phone or a tablet. So I really like to get a power bank that has at least 30 watts is going to be my favorite. But there's some other ones like this one that have 22 and a half watts. That's still not bad, but 30 is a great amount of power on the output and also check the input on it too, because you're gonna want at least 30 watts of power in to keep your power banks charged fast. And if you're buying a larger power bank, like a 20,000 milliamp hour one, you really need to get one that has 30 watts in or more. So this is a 20,000 milliamp hour power bank, but it takes a really long time to recharge because it doesn't support the higher input wattage on it. So I like this one for the capacity, but not as much for how long it takes to recharge in between uses. 
So not only are there built-in cables, but there's also the ports you need to pay attention to. This one only has a USB-C port on the side and a USB cable, but some power banks still have USB-A ports on the side of them, which can come in handy for charging legacy or older devices that still use micro USB if you don't have any newer cables. So it is really handy to have a USB-A port on the side, but you might not find it necessary depending on the devices that you have. Also, when talking about recharging, there's another type of power bank called the Fusion Chargers, and they have fold-up prongs on the side of them. What's great about the Fusion chargers is you can actually recharge this just by plugging it into the wall so you don't actually have to carry around a separate power brick to recharge this so that's a really cool feature and it also turns this into a wall charger as well so you can even recharge the power bank and plug another USB-C cable in and charge another device at the same time so the fusion ones are really cool because of all the functionality that they pack in one small power bank so now that we've talked about all the different features and specs you need to look into whenever you're going to buy a power bank let's talk about these specific models that are my favorite and the ones that I would personally pair together to make the ultimate power bank setup. If you really want to have a MagSafe power bank, I really like this Qi 2 10K model 1654 by Anchor. It's got a kickstand on the back, it's got a display on the side that tells you the current amount of charge in it and how long it's going to take to charge, and it's got a USB C port on the side of it. This one also supports the 15 watts of Qi 2 power, so this is going to be one of the faster MagSafe power banks for the iPhone, and it's a 10,000 milliamp hour size, so this will give you just under two charges on your iPhone. So this is going to be the best one if you want a MagSafe one, but it's also not going to be the most versatile power bank because you only have one port on the side of it, and you're going to need to carry around a power brick to recharge this. So my favorite all around power bank with the cord is the Anchor Fusion 10K because this one has so many great features on it. You have the fold up prongs on the side so you can plug it into the wall to recharge it or you can also use it as a charger for devices while it's plugged in. It's got the really nice length built in USB-C cord and there's a USB-C port on the side as well so you can keep multiple devices plugged in at the same time. This one is a 10,000 milliamp hour size. So this is gonna be great if you wanna use it to keep a phone and some headphones charged. And this one's gonna be just a little bit more heavy than the MagSafe one, but it's also going to give you 30 watts of power out through the cable too. So this will recharge your phone at double the speed of this one. And this will also be able to recharge really fast because it does 30 watts in through the prongs or if you plug it into another charger. Anchor also has another version of this that has a lightning cord as well if you have an older iPhone and you don't have the USB-C on it. So this is the best overall phone power bank in my opinion. So if you're looking to buy a power bank for a tablet or for a laptop, I really like the Anchor 87 watt and the Anchor 250 watt power banks. Let's talk about both of these real quick. The 87 watt is nice because it has a USB-C cord built into the side of it. There's a C port on the top and there's also an A port on the top as well. And you get up to 87 watts of power through all the ports on it. Or if you use just the USB-C port on the top or the cable, tops out at 65 watts of power, which is gonna be fantastic for a computer or a tablet. It's also gonna work just fine with the phone. And this is still a really nice size to put on the back of your phone whenever you're holding it like this. And the cable is plenty long as well to use it with the tablet on your desk. So I really like this one because it's a little bit more portable while still offering you a ton of power. But on the flip side, the Prime Power Bank, the 250 watt one is the greatest power bank that Anchor has right now. It has a ton of advantages. You can charge it with two ports at once with up to 170 watts of power. This is massive with 27,000 milliamp hours of capacity on it. So it's gonna do a great job at keeping your computer charged. And you have up to 250 watts out on this. So you can even power two computers at once with this power bank if you want. And it's still gonna have enough wattage to keep other devices going as well. And the screen on this is sick. It tells you the current battery life. And when you have devices plugged in, it's gonna tell you how much power is going out of each of the ports. Or if you're recharging it, it's gonna tell you how much power is going in and also how long it's gonna take to charge. But this power bank is massive. So I really mostly recommend this if you wanna charge devices a ton of times and you're not gonna have access to a wall outlet, or if you need to keep some really large devices like tablets and computers recharged. So this one is amazing as an all-in-one sort of power bank. So if I could only have two, I would probably just buy the 250 watt and I would also buy the Fusion 10K. This will make a really good one-two punch of having the portable smaller charger and then having the larger higher wattage power if I wanna keep more devices charged and if I wanna use bigger devices like a laptop. But if you want the absolute sleekest no cable setup, then I do really like the Qi 2 MagSafe charger. Or if you want to have another higher wattage, higher capacity option, then this one's gonna be great too. This would make another great pairing, having the MagSafe 
safe for the portability and then having the 87 watt for the higher power. Or just pair this one with the Fusion. These are also gonna make a great pair because you could also recharge this one using the Fusion straight from the wall. So you have everything to look into whenever you're going to buy a power bank. If you're interested in buying any of these, I do have links in the description below. And if you have any other questions about any of these power banks, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.